Blog Talk Radio. This is your host, Tech, with co-host. And I see Game Boy, what it is, what it do. And with our lead correspondent. The sensational one, Shin Blade. How's everybody doing? Doing well. What about you, G? What about you, uh, NSC? I'm good, man. I'm good. Let's go ahead and get the show rolling. Oh, yeah. We got a question. We got to ask you about the bumps, man. We missed you over the weekend. Hey, you wondering about uh, NSC bumps? <laughs> That was trending on Twitter. Yeah, it was. Oh, the NSC bumps. Yeah, <laughs> that and uh, NSC dumps from last week. Dump, dumps yeah. and bumps. Bumps and dumps. New episode. Yeah, let everybody know, everybody, this episode is entitled Sunny Ono Returns. Because, of course, yes, later on today, or later on tonight on this episode, we will have his, the man himself, former... WCW manager and former international consultant and good friends with Eric Bischoff, Sonny Ono, will be joining us here on Under the Match Radio. But also before that, momentarily, all of the stars of our good old company that we support, Adrenaline Championship Wrestling, will be calling in. They will be promoting and giving you information on that great big event that happens this Friday, King of Maryland 2015. So, stars such as the ACW heavyweight champion, Scub, will be calling in. Prodigy will be calling in. Steve Diaz and a bunch of other great stars will be calling in, too. Everybody, if you want to call into the show to discuss anything, if you want to talk about Monday Night Raw, TNA, Ring of Honor, while we have time, please call in at 347-677-1862. But, of course, you can follow this show on Twitter, at Tech. Underscore UTMR. You can follow NSC Game Boy at NSC Game Boy spelled correctly. Please do. And you can follow Shinblade at Sensational One on Twitter. And Shinblade will oh, not spell want... it anymore. Yeah. Oh no, I can spell it one time. Every now and oh, then. Oh wow. S H I N S H I N S A T I O N A L O N E. All right. And, of course, follow us on on YouTube under the Mets Radio. Thank you much. We are uh, subscribers are growing. Follow us on Facebook. Our like page definitely got a lot of the thumbs. As NFC Game Boy says, thank you for the thumbs. <laughs> thank the thumbs. Liking the page. So our like page and group page under the Mets Radio. Follow us on Instagram. It's under the Mets Radio, all um, one word. And if you need to email us with any questions or concerns about any events that's coming up or any ideas for the show, email us at under the mats radio at gmail dot com. So NFC Game Boy, this past yeah. weekend, of course, Under the Mat Radio was at the uh, Ring of Honor TV tapings, which were great. Definitely missed you, NFC Game Boy, and uh, just want to give a shout out to Ring of Honor to. Larry Legend, Trey Mark, to AJ Styles, who appeared on our road trip video, and to all the yes. other great guys of Ring of Honor who um, showed us love. Shimbley, your thoughts real quick? Well, to tell you the truth, uh, I said it on Facebook, but to me it was a mark-out moment to have AJ Styles on the road trip video. It's almost like, you know, when Zack Ryder marked out to John Cena being on his video. So uh, thank you for the thumbs. Thank you for... Uh, you know, liking and watching the video, and a special thank you go out to IWGP star Kenny Omega for hitting me up about it. Yes. Shout yeah, out to Kenny, Kenny Omega. Uh, he hit Shun up and hit uh, me up, you know, giving his big ups to the show and how much he loved the road trip video and how much he is, uh, he's very happy to be a part of uh, AJ Styles. And yes, fans, AJ Styles, former TNA superstar, 
um, international star all around. Current IWGP heavyweight champion will be joining Under the Match Radio very, very soon. Um, I do have a date in mind, but once I clear up a date with the agent, I definitely will announce it on the page. But yes, AJ Styles, the phenomenal one, will be joining us on Under the Mat Radio in the very near future. I also want to give a I gotta shout say, out to also, hmm? I'm sorry to cut you off, but I gotta say also uh, on the video, uh, he referenced an '80s movie since we were talking about '80s stuff last week. He referenced an '80s movie that made me mark out too. Uh, tech. Mhm. You can go ahead. Oh, uh, you want me to say it? Yeah, go ahead. He was on the roll. Oh, it was uh, Barry Barry Gordy's The Last Dragon. Oh yes. And he also said, "Yes, just my converse." Very great movie. (laughs) (laughs) So what? With I said it was a great, great. It was a great movie. Come on now, everybody loves Last Dragon. Very nostalgic. Yeah, yeah, very nostalgic though. Yeah, very nostalgic. Want to give a shout out to our good buddy uh, Paul. Uh, Milliner, great uh, photographer of a lot of great companies around the area and one of the photographers for Ring of Honor. Uh, his picture, uh, the new Ring of Honor shirt that features Samoa Joe, uh, that came from the picture that he took. So he's a good support, mm. supporter of the show, good friend of ours. So I just want to give you a big shout-out, Paul. Um, congratulations, buddy, for your work being broadcasted around the world and with Ring of Honor, too. Before ATW calls on and invades under the mat radio, any see Game Boy? Any words? Any thoughts on uh, Leisha Underground Raw Impact? If uh, anybody watches SmackDown anymore, um, <laughs> I, I just want to say uh, shout out to y'all and the great job that y'all did uh, at Ring of Honor. Uh, I was got a chance to see the video. Um, seeing AJ Styles definitely a uh, uh, great uh, great tribute to. Uh, Showing the success of how Under the Mat is growing, continuing, um, and the great uh, correspondent work, and, and you doing great work, of course, Tech. Um, this week in wrestling has been very exciting. Uh, the road to WrestleMania, of course. Um, Lucha is is, is is doing phenomenal. Um, and, uh, you know what I'm saying? I, I don't know too much about uh, Impact. I didn't see Impact, but, um, you know, I didn't hear I anything did. bad, so I'm guessing that <laughs> that's a good sign. Um Shout out to Tof though. Um, if he's hearing or listening, oh, yeah. he uh, oh, he put is. up funny. Uh, <laughs> he put up some funny statuses in the like the last twenty four hours. Um, if he's listening or whatever, shout out to him because uh, yeah, he he made me laugh thoroughly. The the whole uh, r truth uh, comment, uh, uh, the black delegation uh, <laughs> apology and stuff. That, that oh, was, me that too. Was actually, yeah, that was that was real classic. Um, I like that, but um. Oh, Other than that, I, I think that everything has just been has been going good. Uh, we got a, a great show, so uh, I just I put it in y'all hands right now. Yeah, and definitely want to let everybody know that NFC Game Boy will be uh, representing Under the Mats Radio by going to WrestleMania this year. So I, when NFC Game Boy comes back, he will give us, of course, his live report and live mm-hmm. review of WrestleMania as he does each and every year. Under the Mat Radio had been invited and possibly will be doing going to Rhode Island, Providence, Rhode Island, later in the year, doing a great big convention. Uh, we will give you all the details of that, fans, coming up. Definitely well, um, I, I, I'm sorry to interrupt, though, but there was, also you were talking about the uh, news around in wrestling. There's been a couple of things mm-hmm. going on that I want to state real quick. Uh, one... Minutes. One, Bill DeMott has uh, stepped down from a trainer in NXT amid uh, bullying allegations, which we talked yeah. about bullying about a month ago with uh, Kari Mercer on the show. And then also, uh, what else I was going to say, uh, there has been a report, and I haven't looked into it, about Alberto El Patron, that he had a quadriceps tear, uh, I think, like at, a, uh, at an event. I don't think it was Lucha, though. But... To tell you the truth, Tech, you and I have been talking earlier today, and you pointed out a sign, which I haven't seen Raw yet, that they said that Chris Benoit was innocent. Yes, and and, and, and I definitely will say, um, before we bring in our next, uh, before we bring in the ACW uh, star coming up, 
Yeah, I'm going to make this quick because I've seen this a lot online. And it's a lady by now that, that tech hair, NFC Game Boy, Shin Blade, you know, we run a great show. We have friends with a lot of people in the business, former WWE stars, WCW stars, some of them that are current. We don't give out the list publicly. But I do want to say, on behalf of Under the Mat Radio and people, please get a life. Those of you that keep trolling these pages, <laughs> that keep calling these shows, some of Chris Manuel's innocent, why Chris Manuel isn't going to be in the Hall of Fame. No, he's not going to be in the Hall of Fame. Get over it. The man killed his wife and killed his kid and killed himself. So WWE will not be inducting a man who does that into the Hall of Fame. If you don't want to take my word for it, if you don't want to take Under the Mats Radio's word for it, you can listen to Jim Ross himself, good old JR, when he was on our show last week, and he said the same exact thing. Real quick, there was a fan, looks about 12, 13 years old, that had a sign at Monday Night Raw, which I'm very surprised that they didn't confiscate it, that said Chris Wall was innocent. And now you're starting to see a trend of all of these Chris Wall signs and all of these threads online. About free Chris Wall, Chris Wall's innocent, Chris Wall to the Hall of Fame. Free Chris Wall? No, yes. Some don't believe that he actually killed it. I mean, please, some people oh, think God. Kevin Sullivan killed his family. Get over it, fans. Please, Dave. He's not getting to the Hall of Fame. He's not going to be recognized at all by the WWE. What he did was horrible. It was nasty. It was trash. No, it wasn't because of the steroids. Because Ray hey, barely... doesn't make you do anything. Hold, hold, hold on, hold on. Okay. It's not not because of the steroids. Rory Rage does not have you premeditate an event that you did for the past week. This has been documented by Coco Holly, Chavo Guerrero, Chavo Guerrero, and a whole bunch of other wrestlers who stated that he sent mysterious texts to them throughout the weekend and throughout the week. So let you know it was premeditated, fans. He planned to do this. Regardless of what you think of what pills he had in his body or his brain that was really severe like a 90-year-old man, no. That was true with his brain, but he premeditated. He did something that was very heinous, and that was against the law, and it was nasty and disgusting. And that's all I'm going to say on that. And on that note, we're moving on. Bring it in, okay. Arnold Code 443 from ACW. <laughs> Welcome, buddy. What's up, man? Hey, what's, what's going on? on? How you feeling? How you been? Good, Doing good man. Just uh, getting ready for this big show coming up. Thank you guys for doing uh, ACW's Kick of Barrowing. Mhm. Yeah. So we got you on. Tell us about your involvement with King with ACW King and Ryland. What we can look forward to. Did you introduce well, the guy? Hey, go go go, ahead, brother. I can I can officially say I think I'm I'm actually uh, quite glad I'm not in the tournament this year. Uh, that's a relief off of the shoulder having to, you know, opponent after opponent just to get to the you know the finals. Um, you know, I got one match that I can focus on tomorrow and uh, that era, uh, you know, on Friday. And that that's what I'm looking forward to is uh, I'm actually looking forward to sitting back and, and watching, being able to sit down and watch the tournament this year as opposed to being a part of the tournament. Yeah, so let us know who are you facing and um, your preparations to. And let anybody that's not familiar with, uh, for the first time listeners, let everybody know who you are and who you're going to be facing at ACW. I am the ACW Heavyweight Champion. My name is Skull. I'm the uh, I'm the leader of Riot City's Most Wanted. And uh, come Friday, my opponent is Prodigy, the former Heavyweight Champion for ACW. And me and him will be squaring off in a ladder match. Hmm. Yes, NFC Game Boy. Now, Skull, you know I'm uh, NFC Game Boy is a big fan of Riot City, and uh, yes, sir. that title is long deserved around your waist. But my question to you is is that Prodigy has been on a rampage ever since he lost that title. Is there any type of special preparation or any type of special training that you have incorporated this time around that might give you an edge against Prodigy uh, in this match this coming Friday? You know, no no real special preparation this time going in. Uh, you know, over the last – this this marks two years that Prodigy and I have been at war with each other. And I feel like I know Prodigy very well inside and out, and uh, I know I know what to expect from him. I have no doubt what he brings to the table. He's probably the toughest dude that I've been in the ring with. But uh, the edge that I have is the fact that 
I've been in lots of ladder matches, and I've won lots of ladder matches. I don't think he's been in any. So that was my preparation going into that. Mm. <laughs> Good answer. Good answer. Good answer. <laughs> <laughs> I, was like, I don't know how many ladders he's climbed or been thrown into in his time in the wrestling business, but uh, I've definitely had my fair share. Now, well, let us we? know. Let us know your mindset. How do you prepare for a ladder match? How do you go about it differently as opposed to a regular match? Or I know you've been in cage matches, which we've seen. So how do you prepare to go into a ladder match? Really, going into a ladder match, you really just have to. Uh, I mean, I think I, I think I heard Alberto Del Rio say this in his shoot interview one time. Uh, he said, going into a type of match like that, he's like, you just have to know going in that you're going to get hurt and your body's going to get hurt and you're going to get bumps, bruises, cuts, and scrapes. And uh, really, just you have to be willing to throw and put your body on the line going into a match like that. And that's where my head is right now. Real quick, uh, Shimbley. Um, Actually, I got to say this. Congratulations on your uh, win. You know, we were there, like, live and in person to see it. Um, I I really don't have much, though. I mean, he just basically said what he had to do to prepare for Prodigy. I'm just – Hoping it'll be a good match, which I know it will be, and uh, best of luck. I appreciate that. I feel, I feel like, uh, you know, uh, between the me and Prodigy feud, that I feel like fans have gotten to take a lot away from that. I know that uh, I know that me and him, we didn't, definitely did not see eye to eye when uh, we first, you know, everything first started happening. But I, I feel like there's respect between me and him now that uh, we, we both know that we take each other to the limit a lot when we get in the ring. And I feel like that's brought the uh, the best out in both of us and the best out in the ACW product in general. So, uh, I mean, I'm looking forward to this. I know he's going to beat the shit out of me tomorrow or uh, on Friday. So, I mean, I'm hmm. looking, you know, I know my, my I'm already mentally prepared for it. And I hope he knows that I'm, you know, going to throw everything I got at him. And I plan on bringing the championship back to Riot City. So, so, you, mm. so if you win Friday night against Friday in the ladder match, how will you and Rod City celebrate? <laughs> you better believe we got to go and hang out with the fans, all the people that supported us through everything. I mean, if it wasn't for them and them, you know, keep believing in us and, and what we're doing for them, uh, you know, they they were the ones that really, you know, made us what we are. So we got to go and hang out and celebrate with the, you know, go kick it in the parking lot or go, you know, to a local joint and have a couple of drinks with the fans. That's the way we like to celebrate <laughs> with them. That's how we like to celebrate with our fans. All right. Yes, well, all right. Ryan City's all about their fans, so. Yes, it is. Fans, like I, will are... you guys for, I will see you guys Friday. Yes, all right, all yeah. fans of Ryan City. See you on Friday. Yeah, right, baby. Take Thanks. it easy, guys. All right, take care. Thanks. Everybody that was the leader of Ride mm-hmm. City, ACW Heavyweight Champion Skull. Very great guy, great competitor in the ring. Um, I know all of us say under the mat radio have watched him uh, compete in a lot of different matches, cage matches and four-way matches and singles matches. and He has his hands full with Prodigy. So NFC Game oh, yeah. Boy, who, 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 do you, who, who do you see coming out Friday night? Prodigy or Skull? Well, a lot of people think that Prodigy might might have the edge over Skull because of the, the, the size advantage and, and, and because of, you know, the, between the, the two, you know, like you said, they've been going at it for so long. But Skull has incredible heart, incredible desire. And with Riot City behind him and – you you know why he's the leader. You know, the fans, they love him. He loves the fans. Rod City, they love the fans and stuff. And, you know, they're going to go out there and they're going to give an unbelievable show. So I, I have to give my vote to my man Skull, Rod City. I think he's going to pull it out there. And I think he's going to shock the fans. I think he's going to shock Prodigy. And he's going to uh, he's gonna walk away out of that ladder match, you know, still ACW champion. Uh, Shambly, your thoughts? Uh, I'm going to go the other way. I'm going to go the other way uh, with NFC Game Boy. Depends on who got the more mental capacity. Excuse hmm. me. No, nah, no, nah, we just. I just it. say. 
I just said uh, the mental capacity. You know, like Prodigy, he's more of a he's more of a uh, Mr. Hyde type character. You know, he got all the strength and the, and the, the brut- brutal toughness and everything. But it, I know somewhere Skull is going to pull it out and win. I mean, it's not going to land me in favor of Prodigy. But on a personal note, you know, he did kind of push us around after he, after he lost the uh, title. And you know, well, he didn't touch me. We don't take. Uh, yeah, nah, well, he, he took your belt. He, he, he touched us. Yeah, he, he, I appreciate that. He, he, yeah, he, 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 he took your belt. Well, then, then you're so, right. Kind of, kind of, kind of think of you right. Proud of you, did did not yeah. put his hands on us. We really, you don't appreciate that. Yeah. Maybe, maybe proud of you a hug. Study you, Shen. Hashtag hug prodigy. Speaking of uh, which, that ain't speaking gonna happen of, kill him. <laughs> speaking of the man himself, prodigy, welcome to Under the Mat Radio. What the hell you mean, hug prodigy? Great stuff. We just saying, bro, we might need a hug. You, you know, grabbing up on us, pushing us, you know, release that frustration, if you will. We know you, oh, we know you lost God. the title. We know that you got to go up against a great competitive <sighs> skull in a ladder match. Let the fans know. Let us know your thoughts are going into this match tonight. The problem is, Skull never won that title. He cheated me out of the title. I thought just be just incredible and still cage match. He never won that title. So for him to proclaim that he is a champion is a false lie. And just like your your suits, Evan, they're full of bullshit. Well, I, I'm, I'm not sure who Evan is. Uh, this is Tech. <coughs> <coughs> Ooh, are you okay? You oh. choking on Game Boy? No, nah, I'm I'm, oh, I'm trying to keep from laughing. I thought that that was kind of a cheap shot. Hey, you know, okay, I think you I thought the- Prodigy would just be a little more respectable about you know. The way in, under the mat carries themselves with our suits. Our suit game is flawless, sir. Now when you come to shows looking like Kirk Franklin, I can't be very much respectful. Oh, that's 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 not stuff. I don't even like Kirk Franklin. But 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 you yeah. know, uh, Stomp, which was just something that just incredible did to you in a cage match, and something that uh, Skull <laughs> did when he won a title. And you say the title is false, but yet on the ACW website there's a picture of Skull. With the title that she says is false, with Jesse K and with a uh, former ECW star and WWE star Raven. You know what? So, so what's your thoughts I on that? Enjoyed, I enjoyed this. I enjoyed this conversation. But unfortunately, oh, no, don't go, conversation is, no, it's not. Don't go. Before I hop That's on the phone feel, and beat one of your ass. Of hey, what? what? Just, see, that's the problem, Prodigy. You always want to get so physical with us. You, you push us around, you talk about us, and, and, and you're mad and everything. We don't want no problems. We want to watch a great show. You, you're a great performer. You, you go out there every every time. And, you, and you, you call me a performer? Yeah, you're a performer. Oh, God. Performer. Yeah, I'm, I'm not a performer. You're also a homo oh, not? I'm not a I'm man. Sorry. performer. I'm a fighter. You're a oh, fighter. Right. Oh, I, 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 I greatly apologize. I'm sorry. A performer you are a great porn fighter. Star. They perform. I don't perform. Ice a... skater's a performer. I don't perform. Oh, you don't? Oh. Who the fuck do you call a performer? Oh, did, did I'm he... sorry. Did I offend you? Did... I am, I, wow. I, I'm sorry. I, I, did... I, I don't, this, I don't this, want this, to offend you, Prodigy. Just to help you out, Prodigy. The Dev fans currently following and tweeting the hashtag Hug Prodigy. <laughs> it's actually going around Twitter now, and we're getting uh, Facebook messages. Really? Hug Prodigy. Really? I lied to you not. You want to you wanna hug Prodigy? Do I want a hug? fucking hug? I want my title. I want my title that was stolen from me. And how you go, and how uh, have you been preparing for you for this match? This 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 match of you getting back well, your belt. Well, me and me and Andy Weinberg been in communications. I've been training hard. I've been doing everything I need to do. I've been eating really? nothing but raw meat for the last month. I'm really, Prodigy? Ready. Raw? Is it cooked, Prodigy? You, you, you it says raw. Team with, oh. you, you, you're going to team with Andy Weinberg and talk about Kurt Franklin to Under the Mat Radio at the same time? The, I'm not the dealing with Reverend anybody. I've been, with him. I've been in communications with him. I've been in communications with him. I don't work for don't. anybody. Don't don't do that, Prodigy. Don't don't don't. You know you. Oh, hold up now. You hold are up better. Now. Off. I, I like Andy Weinberg now. You know I'm a, I'm an no, Andy Weinberg I, guy. I know. No, leave Andy I know alone. The boy, the boy likes Andy Weinberg, but Prodigy can be Prodigy. Prodigy's still the game no Prodigy. Title. You know, he's a fighter. Yeah. 
I mean, he, he's a fighter. But my question to Prodigy is, is his him. heart bigger than Skull's? Because Skull has a lot of heart, and he also has a team behind him. You know, he has Riot City behind him. Skull has and also has heart. the championship belt. He has, he has Riot City. If Skull had heart, he would have cashed it in and then set up a match, not steal the match from him. That's not really the rules of what he did. I mean, and know, then it, and then he puts me in his world. I'm terrified of heights. How do you put me in a match with ladders? Am I a high flyer? No. What am I going to do in a ladder is, match? That that is something that um. Oh, sounds like sounds I didn't like I'm the victor. Yes, it is. Prodigy is scared so, of heights. I, I have a question. If you're upside That's down, Prodigy, are you still afraid of heights? Oh my God. You know what? You fuckers have a good day. Oh, come on. Wait, wait. We call, come oh, on. on. We, you you come don't on, Friday. Well, Thank, okay, we, we, do, we do apologize for that. Friday. He always do this to us. Yeah. You know what? We do a class apologize. act, man. Class act. I, wait, 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 wait. Why? Yeah. Did, I mean, Prodigy, he fighter and everything, but he... He acts like somebody with a stick up their butt. I, you know, now hold on. I don't want to knock the beehive now. Because <laughs> the last time I'm he not, knocked I'm not that, he, he hit me. Now. He hit me pretty hard too. That that hurt it. I'm not. I'm. I'm not a wrestler, and I'm not getting in the middle of anything. <clears throat> I just wanted to get a decent interview for us. And Prodigy did not want to speak to us anymore. I understand. I guess he has to go prepare mm-hmm. for his match. Now he's all scared I of ask so. was, I asked if he's upside down. Will he still be scared of ice? That's all I ask. Simple question. Well, you know, when when okay. you have to face your fears in life, we have to when you when in life when you're faced with your fears, sometimes it can be kind of traumatizing. And I believe that's what's going on with uh, Prodigy. But trending on Twitter now is a uh, hashtag Hug Prodigy. It is also <laughs> trending in the ACW world, and a lot of ACW stars are uh, hashtagging it as well. Please give Prodigy a hug, y'all. He Please really do. needs it. He needs he needs that extra motivation and everything. You know. And, and to let everybody know, we will be bringing in Sonny Ono um, on the show a lot sooner than what we expected. So with that being said, we're going to bring in the man himself, Diaz from ACW. Diaz, what's up, buddy? Hey, what's going on, fellas? I just wanted to thank you guys for helping get that hashtag hug prodigy trending, you know. <laughs> If anybody I can see from the AEW roster making the jump to NXT, I could see Prodigy definitely being in the forefront. And who knows, maybe Bailey could get uh, a little bit more pleasant side out of him. But uh, how are we doing, gentlemen? How are we doing? Are you hyped? Are you hyped for Friday night? Are you hyped oh, yeah, for March definitely. 13th? Yeah. Well, I'm hyped, too, because if... Anybody that really, truly knows me, the King of Maryland tournament is the most important event in ACW history. And personally, it's also one of the most important events for myself because for for those of you following at home, the King of Maryland tournament, ever since its inception about three years ago, I've done many, many different things to try and get myself in the mix. I remember last year, in fact, I hijacked the King of Maryland tournament you know, to get a spot because the year before that I wasn't even mentioned. And now, this year, I know now more than ever, this year is going to be the year of Diaz, of the mini boss, of the ACW light heavyweight champion. And, you know, Skull, you kind of kind of pissed me off saying that you're glad that you're not in the tournament. You know how hard I had to fight to get into that tournament, dude. I know we've been on opposite sides of the ring a dozen times before, but you just really pissed me off right there, dude. And I'm going to win the ACW King of Maryland tournament, and I'm coming for your heavyweight championship. Mm. Hopefully you still haven't said it. Yeah, you just heard that. And on top of that, the King of Maryland tournament is always going to uh, bring ACW fans out, but we have so much more on the card. We have former WWE, former WCW, TNA, ECW superstar Raven on the card. We have ACW women's champion Sarah Feeney alongside with the Candy Kid. Uh, Those are two of my favorite parts of the show, to be perfectly honest. You got the Candy Kid handing out candy to the fans. I'm always hearing people talking about her. And Sarah Feeney, where do I begin? I mean, 
She's beautiful. She's talented. Okay. And most of all, she's res- she has respect for the business. Uh, I can't I can't even begin to tell you guys how dedicated and how like motivated we all are in the ACW locker room from the cameramen to the producers to the talent themselves. It's just top to bottom. This is the kind of workplace that I want to be a part of and the kind that I'm proud to be yeah. uh, a part of. Oh, and by yeah. the way, guys, if you have vi- if you visit the adrenaline chain, if you visit adrenalinewrestling dot com, you can buy tickets for this event. They're selling out fast, so I can guarantee you it's going to sell out. So you guys better jump on that right now. Yes, please do. And we fans, we definitely will give you the link and all that information on the Under the Mat Radio page, like page, angry page. We will also mention that on the show later on. DS, thank you very much, man. Hey, thanks for having me, guys, and thank you for all of your support. No problem. Viva la lucha, viva la Diaz. Yeah. Hey, buddy, it was Diaz, the longest reigning ACW light heavyweight champion, Diaz himself. Maybe that person can give Prodigy some candy. Maybe need to hug in some candy. Wait, that's a that's a that's a hashtag. Give Prodigy candy. <laughs> yeah, definitely could. So, oh, y'all just make this up not, as we go along, y'all. <laughs> yeah. No, you know, this is, we don't script anything. We're not WWE. NSK, oh, okay. this is Radio. Hashtag. We always have hashtag every week. Hashtag Hug Prodigy is trending on Twitter and in the ACW world. <laughs> Does Prodigy got a Twitter? I don't know. I don't know. It's a good question. Well, with that being said, fans, we will bring in the man himself, making an early entrance as always, former WCW manager, former WCW international consultant. He managed such greats as Ernest the Cat Miller, Ultimo mm-hmm. Dragon, mm-hmm. Five Coasts, Bull mm-hmm. The list mm-hmm. goes on. Yuji Nagata. We going to bring in now, live, 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 go. Sonny Ono. Welcome back to Under the Mat Radio. Hey, how you guys doing? Hey, what's up, Sonny? Doing good, man. Hey, what's up? It's it's all good here. It's, I mean, it's like it's like uh, went from went from like a deep freeze to summer all in one day. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was like it was like twenty five below zero a few days ago, and all of a sudden it's sixty one today. You know, That's no nice. wonder people get sick. <laughs> yeah, it is. Oh yeah. How you, yeah. How you feeling today, Sonny? I'm doing good. I mean, you know, we uh, it is, uh, uh, a lot of good thing happening. You know, I I always see the cup half full. Mm-hmm. You know, so uh, no, it's all it's all good, man. I mean, life is short. You got to enjoy life and and don't look back and don't be a hater. You know, be happy yeah, about what all the good stuff happening to somebody. Yeah. <laughs> beautiful. beautiful. Mm. That, that being said, Sonny, thank you again for coming on to the show. I know it's gonna be all a first time for some some of our listeners to hear you. Um, of course, we know you have a long... If you can, talk to us about your career before WCW. I know you have a very extensive martial arts background back in the 70s, so if you can, um, tell us a little bit about that. Well, you know, I was... Um, um, before I got into professional wrestling, um, and, and the reason I got into professional wrestling is because of, because of uh, uh, my martial art training, Um and I was uh, um, I was the uh, I competed in in uh, PKA Professional Karate Association back in days, uh, which was uh, um, a, you know early form of kickboxing, a mixed martial arts. So you know just just being ahead of my time, um, and and uh, um, through through all the traveling I did for competing. Um, and one of the guys I used to compete with and, and travel with, uh, who lived up in Minneapolis, was Eric Bischoff, and he he knew that I was fluent in Japanese, and and um, um, you know that that's in essence because of because of our relationship and and because uh, Eric know knew um, um, the fact that I was fluent in Japanese, and he wanted to repair this relationship with New Japan Pro Wrestling. That's how I got into professional wrestling. But far as far as my martial art background goes, you know, I was um, um, I was one of the, the top bantamweight from 1975 to 81. 
um, um, you know, has competed and, and, and won some national titles and, and uh, uh, some world titles, had, had traveled, competed in South Africa, um, Europe, um, and, and um, you know, throughout Asia. So, you know, martial arts has been really uh, instrumental on who I am today and, and, and the person I am today. So, um, you know, um, and, it, it, and it's a great training in a sense that um, – um, um, anybody who who has a child um, um, thinking about getting in, involved in something, one of the best things they can do is get them involved in in in, in the karate uh, uh, or uh, you know or wrestling because you know wrestling is form of martial arts and it's the only martial arts taught in the school system. And I think I think it's, it builds character. You know, you can't hide behind somebody. You know. Um, you're not passing the ball. Uh, you can't say he dropped the ball. So that's why we lost the game. You know, there's no excuses. Just you and the guy in front of you. So I, I think what martial arts teach uh, self-discipline. Um, um, you know, the confidence you'll, you'll teach you. I, I, I think when I when I say martial arts, you know, I include wrestling in that. I think it's one of the greatest things that you could get get your kids involved in. And of course, I'm a big fan of wrestling. Um, um, especially collegiate and, and, and high school wrestling, um, and, and along with pro wrestling, I have a lot of respect for those athletes as well. But um, you know, so I, I I think martial arts is, is a great conduit to uh, where I got. You know, why why did I end up in in, in professional wrestling? Okay. So, um, I know around if it's correct, uh, let us know how did you first meet Eric Bischoff. Eric and I had done some business together, um, um, and, and matter of fact, Eric Bischoff will tell you, if you ever get to ask him a question, the, the reason how he got into professional wrestling was because of the business that, that we, were, we were putting together together. Um, uh, we were selling this game that I created called Ninja Star Wars, and, and uh, yes. Eric had wanted to get it on television to sell it. And, and, um, and one of the television uh, uh, executive or television production company was back in AWA with Greg Gagne and, and, and uh, Vern Gagne, um, AWA. And uh, he he went to, actually went there. Uh, we shot a commercial because, uh, you know, I do know how television works, especially syndicated stuff. They get a commercial time for them to sell. And so we made a deal to be able to sell the, uh, uh, to to show the commercial on their show and and um, thus the relationship started with Eric Bischoff and and uh, um, AWA. And next thing you know, the good-looking Eric Bischoff, um, being articulated as he is, you know, got hired as an announcer. And hmm. and uh, r- rest is kind of history. So, do I want to take credit for Eric Bischoff getting in wrestling business? Um, uh, yeah, I will. <laughs> so, so all, all those haters of Eric Bischoff can blame me for that one. <laughs> so, why, why do you, real quick, before I turn it over to NFC Game Boy, why do you think, Sonny, everybody hates Bischoff? Why do you think people give Bischoff so much heat in the business and out of business? You know, I, I, I have a hard time understanding that one as well. If if you look at the fact, okay. Um, if he wasn't for, um, um, I mean, this, tell me if I'm wrong, but if he wasn't for Eric Bischoff taking WCW to the heights where he went, where he competed, and at one point we were beating uh, uh, WWF at the time, or, you know, the, the, the Raw, when we were head-to-head, um, if, in, in creating a demand for the talent, you know, if if he wasn't for right. that competition factor, a lot of wrestlers would never got the pay they got. I mean, that is true. I mean, I, I I don't understand it. You know, you you, I guess you can dislike the person, but because of the environment he created, because um, if he wasn't for that, you know, if if he wasn't for two company. And, and not to disrespect ECW, but ECW never was going to make uh, pay the talent that kind of money, you know. Yeah. So, so if it wasn't for the environment 
that the Eric created, or Eric helped create it. Obviously, he had help with the uh, uh, a, a Turner, a Ted Turner, and and his love for professional wrestling, and and um, the machine he had was uh, Turner Broadcasting, um, right. and having that vehicle. But you know, if it wasn't for him, I mean, there've been other people before him that that had that same opportunity, but never got that, ne- never created that environment. And because he created an environment of competition, um, a lot of guys got, you know, the people who were making, you know, thirty five, forty thousand dollars a year was making all of a sudden, you know, uh, was making uh, six figures, and and you know, and, and some of those guys were making seven figures. So, you know, I I don't understand the the, the you know the dislike of Eric Bischoff. If you look at the whole the big picture. You might not like him because he didn't, you know, doing a negotiation, you know, um, and, and, you know, like I'm not asking anybody to like Eric. I'm just saying, you know, uh, you know, wrestling and, and, and dealing and negotiating with a wrestler can't be easy. There's, there's a lot of egos and there's a lot of, you know, a uh, 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 lot of stuff that goes on um, uh, picking orders and who gets to be on the show and you know all that mm-hmm. kind of thing and I'm sure there's a lot right. of issue where, where you know the, the the ego gets into the uh, but but end of the day you know if somebody told me that that, that you, you know we're gonna pay you you know six seven hundred thousand dollars and but we're not gonna put you on TV I, I'll take that job mm-hmm. you know I mean and I and, and at this point in game. An environment today, um, I think every, everybody looking back to where where it was in and 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 you know ninety eight, ninety nine, two thousand. Um, I think I think majority of the wrestler, if you asked them, I think they missed that period of time. Because oh, yeah. I, I really truly believe um, uh, it, it was the best time of professional wrestling. In history of professional wrestling, yeah, I mean for well, I, I for talent agree. for talent's perspective, and also company's perspective. You know, Vince McMahon might have hated a lot of Eric's tactics, but you know, he, I think he made their product better. He made their work harder. You know, and and, yeah. and vice versa. You know, competition's good. That's why we compete mm-hmm. in this country. You know. Oh yeah. Um, and and. Uh, um, so I so to to answer your question, I think end of the day they can have a they can have their issue with Eric Bischoff, but you know I, I don't think because not because the money he pays you. And 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 you know what else is there? I mean, really, I I don't care if if my boss dislikes me or I dislike my boss, you know. He's the guy who's writing a check and he's writing you the biggest check you ever had in your life. I, I I don't understand. I don't understand the. I I just. I, it's hard for me to believe that why why, you know. I'm, I'm sure they had. Like I said, I I don't want to go into a personal, you know, issue he had with each individuals. But if you look at the big picture, you know, he he made us all a lot of money. Yeah, definitely is true, and I we do agree with that. Uh, NFC Game Boy. Well, my question to you is this: With your influence. In, uh, back in those days and stuff. And now with the, the 2KR, with Impact Wrestling and everything, no one else has been able to really capture the success of defeating uh, the WWE like Bischoff and yourself in, in the WCW days. Um, so, of course, with Bischoff being in, 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 in the helm at the time, you know, his his creative mind and, and the, the, back, that, the backing that he had helped toward it. Is there anybody else that you feel that could uh, nowadays might be a threat? Any other promotion, if they had the right money behind them, um, maybe New Japan, uh, uh, Lucha, uh, Impact, um, um, Ring of Honor, if, in your opinion, if any of those had uh, uh, some type of um, Eric Bischoff-like uh, person in the helm, do you see any of those might be uh, putting WWE you know, on notice or anything? In your opinion, 
Well, first of all, I, I think I think WWE is 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 forefront and 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 you know they're they're the company. I mean that's where everybody want to go go work. I remember some of the Japanese talent. One of their wish were on their wish list, not necessarily to you know uh, uh, make that the big money, but you know they want it on their resume that they work there. So there is, um, you know, there is. Um, um, uh, uh, God, what am I trying to say? There, there is a trophy factor being able to say I worked at WWE. I think to a certain certain mind, you know, especially to a talent. As as a, when I say talent, I'm talking about wrestlers. Um, okay. You know, um, but to to answer your question of, um, you know, environment is so different now. I think, you know, um, uh, with, with right. Uh, a, a company and television. First of all, you have to have a television, and 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 having you know. I think Eric had a, a supporter and 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 chairman of of um, at, at Turner Broadcasting, uh, meaning Ted Turner, who was who was a big fan of wrestling. I think you know, and having you know, when Ted Turner says, "How can we compete with them?" and Eric says, "Okay, it takes this, this, and this, and this," and you know. I, and Ted said, "Okay, I mean, when you have that kind of backing, along with you know owning your own television network or multi multi television network, um, and you know, I and and I think a lot of thing it has to be a perfect storm. I think a lot of good, a lot of things have to come together, you know. Mm-hmm. True. Um, 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 so, but it does take and and it does take certain amount of mind." To be able to deal with um, those wrestling, you know, talents, I think I think it's a unique. Um, I, I think you know you have to be. You can't just be a business guy. Uh, you have to be street smart in sense. And I think Eric was that person. He, you know, he been. I mean, he, you know, he he done everything from selling meat door to doors when he was young. I mean, he knows. He, he knows the street and he was street smart enough um and to be able to to deal with some of those talent and get things done um so i i think he takes us you know i i think he, he can it happen again um yeah i'm sure he can but i think he, he takes he takes like i said a perfect storm to make that happen and have to have that person you know certainly one of the equation is having someone like eric bischoff um to be able to do that um um I, I think there there's opportunity um right now because because the wrestling fans are looking for um I mean, you know, I mean you guys went through the the time of what we talked about, you know, ninety eight from N W O to um um you know, to year two thousand. Mm-hmm. Those those two years were phenomenal. Um right. you know, the, the New Japan benefit from it when when, when Chono and Muda Took the NWO angle and took it to Japan, invading New Japan with with NWO Japan. You know, one summer in, in 1998, um, we couldn't print a T-shirt fast enough. We sold five million dollars worth of T-shirt one year, um, wow. and that's just black and white NWO T-shirt. Um, wow. You know, <laughs> uh, yeah, and that's just in Japan. People were walking into a door, uh, buy a ticket, and not a wrestling fan. But walking into a tick to buy a ticket just so they can get inside and buy the t shirt and they will buy like ten t shirts and leave. They didn't even watch a the show. They weren't really? wrestling fans. Yeah, wrestling hey. got the <laughs> NWO got bigger than wrestling. You know, I mean he yeah. really did in Japan. Huh. Um it was one of oh, the biggest goodness. I think it's it's probably even to this day it's probably the biggest, you know, angle or biggest storyline that, that that ever happened. Um and and, and uh, now New Japan been was run at the time by uh, Antonio Inoki, and of course he was the chairman. <laughs> and obviously that, that you know the, the company been sold a couple of different times, um, but uh, still, uh, I think if if you ask me who, who, who worldwide who's the number two wrestling company in the world, I, I think I think you can arguably say that it, it is New Japan Pro Wrestling, and I'm a big fan of New <clears throat> Japan. Um, um, you know, uh, I think there there's Constant putting out great product. Um, right. So yeah. you know, 
and I globally, I think we've gotten. You know, the world is smaller, and I think, I think, um, um, I think, you know, what um, Jeff Jarrett is doing with New Japan. Uh, um, I, I think there, there is, there is um, a place for that. Place for uh, international wrestling. I mean, truly international wrestling. You know, um, um, if you, if you can compare compare WWF to uh, Major League Baseball and having a World Series, you know, how can you have a World Series when 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 your team is only from Canada and the United States? It's not really a World Series, is it? I mean, in a sense, that's of actually world. true. Worse. Yeah, yeah, it's true. <laughs> You because know, uh, I mean, Super Bowl is like world champions, and like nobody plays around the world in the NFL. Correct. You know, when when they say world soccer, I, guess what? It really is a world soccer. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Right. Um So so uh, um, yeah, I, I I think you know with the right package, right. Um, um, I I. You know, I, I think it can happen. You can't take somebody like some some company like New Japan, and 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 bring it to uh, uh, with, with the right mixture of American talent, or or for for in a for that matter for a more more of an international talent. I think you can, and I think this opportunity exists for somebody like Jeff, who, who's who's who, I, I believe this is something he, what he's trying to do is try to bring that. You know the international wrestling, international type of pro wrestling, um, and expose it to uh, American audience. Right, I do agree. Um, Shimley, well, uh, I, 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 um, wow, I'm stammering. Uh, nice to meet you, Sonny. Uh, awesome person so far. I have to say though that um, I, I came across some news, and if you know, if you know about training and wrestling. Uh, there was some news last week about uh, Bill DeMott stepping down amid allegations of uh, bullying and doing torturous means to uh, to uh, prospects for WWE and NXT. Um, let me ask you: Were there, any, if you know, was there anything like that in WCW and in the power plant? You know, I, I, I you know, I've been to power plant. I, I mean, I, I was, I was, I've been there, um, witnessed some stuff there. I think training to be a, you know, I think somebody mentioned, you know, you you take um, uh, you take somebody like Stu Hart, who who had, uh, uh, you know, the, the training they did up in that the dungeon that they called, you know, it, 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 and and stretching the young boys as they say, it's 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 pretty borderline, I would think, you know, from the story I hear. Um, uh, but I think I think, and, and I don't know. I was I, I don't know the situation with 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 uh, with Bill, but you know he is he's amazing talent. Let me let me say that first and foremost. Uh, when he was Hugh Morris at WCW, I, I I mean you know the giant of the man and the stuff he used to do in the ring off the top rope. Uh, he was doing stuff that 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 that, uh, that Luchador was doing, you know, and 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 far as physical talent goes, um, he is he is amazing, and I I don't think he got, um, he got, you know, and I'm sure he felt this way as well. But personally, I, I think he he could have probably been a bigger star in WCW. Um, um, getting back to the, to the subject. You know, it, it, it's difficult for someone to uh, teach pro wrestling. And, and mind you, I'm, I'm not saying I'm, I'm a pro wrestler by any means, but I know some of the stuff that goes on and what it takes to be a wrestler, a uh, professional wrestler. And, and um, mm-hmm. you know, I didn't see anything like that, and, and, and certainly in power plant. But, but I've seen guys do, you know, 100 squats and, and, and can't walk next day. Um, you know, and 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 and, it, and I gotta tell you, I can't imagine the training and 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 what Bill put some of these guys through is near as much as what what New Japan um, wrestling schools are like. Um, right. Mm. Brutal, yeah. But I think at the same time they're trying to weed out some people as well. 
Um, you know, um, it, it it it's it's a real difficult, I think, situation that that probably Bill was in as well, because he want these a lot of these young guys, um, um, you know, had to teach him the respect of the business. At the same time, had to had to make them realize, you know, what it takes to be on the road, you know. 300 days a year, and 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 uh, you know what kind of, what kind of punishment your body takes, um, and what you have to endure to to be a professional wrestler. Um, so you know I I don't know the detail of you know abuse or name calling. You know we get kind of you know it's it's a when you work in a corporate world, it's it you know you 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 got to really you got to watch it, you know your p's and q's and 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 I don't know how much experience Bill probably had and and you know unfortunately for him he may and I'm not saying I know any of these stuff he may or may not use you know wrong term to describe the situation mm-hmm. and try to get his point across you know what I mean right mhm with, with with that being asked as to Wanted to know, of course, we know you did a lot of background being an international consultant. Um, let us know, how was that job for you, bringing in, like, Liger and bringing in a lot of international stars at WCW? And let us know, how did they adapt from the lifestyle up here in the States and wrestling in the States to wrestling, of course, um, in Japan? Well, interesting enough, you know, my my my, uh, my mentor from New Japan was... was uh, um, my counterpart was Brad Rengans, who was the, uh, you know, of course, oh, yeah. the Olympian from '84, mm-hmm. um, wow. uh, star from AWA, and he, he, you know, it was an interesting dynamic we had because he he worked for New Japan um, under Masa Saito, um, and and you know, my counterpart was Brad, but you know, I, I because I I'm fluent in Japanese, you know, I we got a lot of things done uh, through Masa, and and. You know, half the thing was understanding what they want from us as the company goes, uh, which was to introduce their talent and and make them make them a, a international star, not just Japan star, Japanese stars. And so, you know, we we can achieve that by putting putting them on our television, and and of course, you know that that gets you know that gets back to Japan, taken back to Japan. The show is, and, and they become bigger than life. You know, um, so uh, you know, so it, it was the right formula, and 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 then what they lacked was you know being able to speak and do interview because obviously you know if you can't communicate here you can't you can't do the you can't do the show, um, so you know that's that's how I got my job. But Sonny Ono, the the, the international, uh, the, you know, the, the the very wealthy manager from Japan. Um, the character was created from that. Um, um, Masa was instrumental on, 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 on helping me do that. Um, and you know, I, I benefit from you know everybody from Kanemoto to Chono Liger, and and you know what made WCW unique, an opportunity with with you know some of the three hour nitros and of course thunders. Um, you know, because we have so many television that we need to we need to fill. Um, you know, uh, we got we got to bring in the, the luchadors and 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 create really the international you know wrestling and and right. uh, um, you know and you got to remember there's no commercial time when they, when they do a show in Japan. I mean, when they say 30 minute one fall, you know, sometimes they do wrestle for a whole 30 minutes. You know, oh, uh, wow. You know, and 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 those guys are in shape. So you know, mm-hmm. um, and and it, 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 you know, it's 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 not a three minute squash matches. You know what I mean? I mean, um, you and that that's why a lot of guys go to Japan to 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 uh, 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 sharpen their skills, <laughs> or polish their skills. But you know, when you go over there, you know, like I said, I mean, you you better be in shape. You know, you 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 know yeah. you're you're wrestling, um, but uh, um, you know it, it was it was a great time. I mean, I mean, I I said at the beginning of the show, it is, you know, I was involved in a period of time 
um, in, 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 uh, in, in, in the height of professional wrestling. You know, like it or not, you know, we were we were doing between two company. They were producing highest rating on television. Um, I, I think it was the best of time for both companies. Um, and I don't know the numbers, but I will tell you, just on rating alone, you know, we don't have that kind of impact anymore. Um, so, you know, if we can go back to, you know, 2000, I, I, I think you asked Dan Stan. I, I think, you know, looking back now, I think he would say yes. And 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 I and like I said, most of the talent would say yes, because right after when WCW was absorbed by WWE, um, a lot of guys got called in office and got their contract reduced <clears throat> or restructured. <clears throat> you know, yeah. so when you don't have no place to go except one place, they can raise your rent or reduce your rent or however you want to look at it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. true. I can imagine that. That is true. <laughs> you know. So, um, uh, well, competition I is good, man. It's good for good for the company, good for people, good for talent, good for the audience. Sonny, I good have for a your question, package, too. Um, this is more of a serious question. <laughs> Last week, we had the opportunity to interview Jim Ross. Um, great guy. Um, great interview. And uh, I asked him the question about. Uh, black stars, um, colored guys, stars in the WWE, and why they only pretty much dated mid-card status. And um, he, he told me um, his answer was was that, you know, a lot of guys just haven't shown that they really can carry the company, um, you know. And, and, and I understand, I, I you know, this is his opinion, and I respect Jim Ross's opinion. Um, the WWE claims that they can make stars, but for some reason most of the stars that they've made in the last, you know, 10 years have all been guys who have not been of other ethnic groups, you know, unless they came from other promotions such as Booker T came from WCW, Ray Mysterio, also Eddie Guerrero and all them. Those guys came from other promotions, but when it comes from within, they they seem to have a problem with that. Um, I remember a long time ago you had a... Uh, a, a similar problem with uh, racist. Um, I think it was the lawsuit and everything. Um, I know you really can't speak much on it, but um, can you kind of no, give you know, us? You know, you know, it, it's very simple. I, I, I and I, I truly, to this day, I believe this. You, you cannot take a person who living in 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 one type of environment. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, and and expect that guy um, to write a story about something he doesn't know anything about. So in other words, in, in other words, if I never been to Compton, and 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 Sonny Ono started writing a story about, you know, a street story about Compton. First of all, it won't be real. It would be my vision or my my understanding of it, and I never lived there. You know who? You know what I mean? I I can't write right. about I can't write about um, um, uh, uh, a struggle of slavery. I I haven't experienced it. I don't know how it would be to be owned by another human being. Um, mm-hmm. You know, so so I can only write about what I know. So so I'm a guy from New York. And 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 how can you how how can I if I'm a writer and and if I somebody says okay you got two black guys and we want to make you, make these guys a star how can I realistically do that except make them what I think what black guys are you know mm-hmm. can black guy wear a suit I don't know you know all I know is you know. Uh, they rap. I don't know. You know. I mean. You know what I'm saying. Their 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 experience is limited. So how can I be a writer about trying to make get these guys over? So I mm-hmm. I I think that's the probably more of an issue than anything else. Now, you take somebody like Rock, who is half African American and and obviously half Polynesian. 
you know, he crosses over. But I think a lot of that was created by, um, um, it was a lot of his input, you know. And, 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 and if you can say it, I mean, he's certainly bigger than wrestling right now. I mean, I mean, he has moved beyond that, I should say, you know. Dwayne Johnson is a movie star. He's an actual movie star. And and so, um, you know, uh, can they create? Yeah, I think on the right environment, I think you can. But I think, you know, um, so, you, you know, you, you take somebody like Vince Russo, who, who comes in to, from New York, and 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 it makes makes a, makes a public statement on the show on, on I think one of the, one of the one of the radio shows says he's from America and he wants nothing but Americans and 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 you know and uh, um, next thing all the Japanese and, and Mexican who what what made WCW different and and they're off the TV. And and you can you know he he'll argue and tell you that no we had Mexican on TV only Mexican that kept on TV was Hoovy everybody else was mm. gone and he, yeah I, I never thought of that you're right I never thought of that either Conan is not Mexican he's he's he's, he's American um, mm-hmm. you know Ray Mysterio is from San Diego he's American mm-hmm. um, Mexican descent yes Spanish descent yes but you know. So it's it um you know like I said you can't make that kind of statement and 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 certainly a, if I, if I tell you and and categorize my like and dislike by race I don't know that I think that would make me a racist I could be wrong but th- that would be my definition okay All right. And I, I, Thank you. To, Thank to, you, to answer your question, is exactly you, that. I, I think it's difficult for somebody who hasn't experienced. You know, how can I how can I get get people of different um, um, persuasion? You know, I, I I can't write about. You know, I I can't get gay guy over because that's not my persuasion. Um, mm-hmm. You right. know, if I'm a writer, how can I write about that? Yeah, you know, uh, yeah, and, and I think that's basically it is a major issue to, to, you know, long way about answering your question, but that I think that's what it is, you know. We want to ask you too, Sonny. We hear your dogs in the Thank background. You. We want to ask you their names. <laughs> My dogs. <laughs> yeah, your dogs. I have a, I have a, a, a miniature poodle named Princess. That's my dog. Um, and and you know that like I said that doesn't that doesn't make me gay. I just like little poodles. No, I have a Jack Russell, uh, <laughs> and and I have a, a English bulldog. Oh man, I love English Bowser. bulldogs. I yeah. do. Yeah. 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 Um, when I ask you this real quick, before we um bring in um one of our supporters to ask you a question, um, out of all the international talent, as far as the men, and then we'll get to the ladies in the few. Who do you, who did you feel you had the toughest time managing, or you felt was like a little more aggressive, out of Nagata, Chono, Muda, um, Liger, you know, all the people you brought in? Well, I think I think you know, I mean, look, I the you know, I was I, I enjoyed. I'm going to flip your question a little bit. That who did I enjoy the most is you know, hanging out with Yuji Nagata is probably you know one of my funnest times. Um, New Japan would send their young guys uh, to actually live here and and uh, uh, work here for you know a year and uh, uh, or more. Um, and and uh, some of my directives um, were a little different. When when Nakanishi was here, I was told by Master Saito to just let him. You know, I don't want you to you know do much with him. I just I just want you to to you know let him kind of learn the business himself um you know so i i didn't really manage him um um so, but when like when a guy like yuji was here um you know the directive was a little different you know i got to manage him we traveled together um you know um, um you know you, you know and when you when you do the things when you become wrestling every wrestler will tell you that um you know, you become brothers. You know what I mean? 
I mean, you mm-hmm. travel, you eat, sleep, you know, you 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 you, you do those things, and and uh, um, you know, and of course, my job was making sure that you know they didn't get too crazy or get in trouble, which is a very difficult thing to do at times. Um, not with the Japanese talent so much, but with with some of the American talents, it was kind of scary. Um, you got any stories on that? Oh, there's there's yeah. so many stories that I can tell you. I mean, you know, um, um, Hawk. Um, at one time, <laughs> Road Warrior Hawk. I was in Japan with Macho Man Randy Savage, one of the big shows we went out there, and and there was some issue with with uh, 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 Gorgeous George and Hawk and him and his wife and um um you know they live in Tampa and they all, they all lived in Tampa and I didn't know anything about what went on in Tampa and next thing you know Macho Man's supposed to go out there and and music is playing and Macho Man is arguing with Hawk in a backstage and I, and and Japanese Choshu if you know who Choshu is one of the scariest looking man you can imagine yeah. comes in <laughs> yelling at me like you know what the fuck is going on? Basically, in terms, and 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 uh, um, you know, they're next thing I know, they're throwing punches, you know, and, wow. and uh, but but yeah, so it, it, it I mean, there's there's it, it, there's a lot of amazing stuff that I I I, I probably should write a book about, um, but you know, professional that he is, the Macho Man was, he went out then, you know, and and and. Uh, did his thing and 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 uh, gave the audience a, a, a great wrestling match. Um, I mean, I can I, you know, there's there's some stuff that, but the scariest man ever, and 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 it's still um, uh, King Haku or or Ming. He's yeah. probably the one of the scariest men, and I think every wrestler will tell you that oh, yeah. that, that, that yeah. he, he's probably. Um, I remember one time we were in Baltimore. Nasty Boy's cousin yeah. or. <laughs> Somebody um, was was um, giving um, um, Haku a hard time, and 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 uh, we're in a Marriott Baltimore bar by the airport. I never forgot this. We looked, and next thing I know, Haku had this guy, a pretty good sized guy, bent over backward on a jukebox. Mm-hmm. And mm. and and I thought. You know, I look over and it's just like, oh my god! And it's you know, and and he took took Randy Savage and a few other guys to kind of calm him down and send him up to his room because I think he would have just, you know, I used to say this all the time. And 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 the fans, and if there's any fan out there listening, you know, they're great talents, but end of the day, they're great athletes. And a man who weighs, you know. 350, 400 pounds, you should not be giving him any crap, you know, and, and fans yeah. are kind of stupid, and, and, and I'm not saying all of them, I'm just saying some are, especially when they're having a few beer, and, and you know, they want to, you know, we all get brave, you know, when they, when, after about 12 packs, and, you know, um, so they can go home and tell a story about how, you know, I got punched by a wrestler, but the truth is, I, I would tell people, and I, I, I even to this day I tell people I said, listen, King Haku, dad or grandfather was the actual king of Tonga. Mm-hmm. And if I'm right, mm-hmm. I think they used to eat people. So why would you want to mess with that guy? They, they did. <laughs> they did. Yeah. So why would you want to <laughs> mess with the guy who used to eat people? <laughs> you, you have a death. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, he's real, man. You know, it ain't no, you know, he, I, I, I think there's been a story where he bit people's nose off, and you know, I mean, he's he's scary. You know, if you had to pick yeah. one guys to 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 be on your side, you know, that's 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 uh, Tonga. I remember, I remember. We were in a bar once, and 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 uh, there was a commotion, and and he was going off, and I remember Barbarian grabbing me, put me behind him, and said, "Brother, you need to just stay here." And and I thought, I thought, you know, with that cue, I thought, you know, Barb Barbarian, we're going to Barb, would go out and help Tonga. No, he just stayed the hell away from Tonga too, because he didn't want to get beat up by Tonga either. 
I'll, I'll say real quick, um, and I know we got our buddy Toph on hold. Uh, I, I've I've had the pleasure to meet Barb in person and got got a chance to talk to him backstage at an event with some some of our buddies. Sweetest man ever. He's covering the show, and and yes, and the is. good thing is that. Uh, uh, we've we've had the honor to hear him talk, and as he said, he never talks on TV, and which is true. And uh, I asked him about Mingo, how cool he's. Like, oh, tough, toughest, tough, tough man, tough man, mean good guy. But no, don't mess mm-hmm. with him. And and everybody we've talked to, you know, Bobby Blaze and and, and Barb and a whole bunch of yeah WCW uh, WWE guys. Everyone says to this date, the toughest man of all time is how cool. No one wants to yeah. mess with him. Well, like I said, you nice know, he, guy. He, oh, great! Especially when he's not drinking. Sweetest <laughs> <laughs> man ever. Hell's my baby. You know, all my kids. You know, just just loves love. Just I mean, love just pour out of that man's pores. And 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 but boy, I tell you what. You know, you you want to you, you don't want to be around when he's if, if he's. I don't think he drinks anymore. But yeah, he's he's he's, he's definitely a scary person. I mean, it's literally mm-hmm. scary. I, you know, if there was a grizzly bear and a Ming, I think I'd take Ming. I mean, he he's that tough. He just he just didn't look good on um, '90s WWE TV by the way they were booking him. But when he was Ming and came back as Haku in 2001, he looked like a tough dude. Like he could take you down in a fight. Oh, and, and you know what? You gotta understand. Yeah. I mean, let me give you a little background about those two, Barbarian and 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 and, and, and Ming and Haku. I mean. Those guys, I, I believe they were age of either 13 or 14. They were sent from Tonga to Japan to train as a sumo yeah. wrestler. And you talk about Bill Dumont mistreating and, and abusing athletes or talents. Those guys were brutalized. I mean, they you know, I mean, they were they were beat to a crap. And and because they want to make you tough, and that's why they did it back in the days. I'm not saying that's right or wrong. Um, obviously, it's, you know, it's it, 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 it's not conducive to something you can do business and and corporate world in 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 2015. But you know, that's why they're so damn tough. And that's why. Oh yeah. That's why you need to respect them. And I think if it's, if not for nothing, what Bill, you know, I, I can certainly understand his frustration. Uh, about some of those guys not understanding the the, the the you know the people who became before them, you know what they had to do to get there, you know to become a star in, in professional wrestling. Hmm. Hmm. All right, uh, Shimbley. Um, you know, to say the truth, Sonny, you know I've seen you on Facebook and, and now you have Twitter, and there's been going around talking about you, and then you've been stating this. People have been saying that you are the selfie king. Can you can you further explain that? Because it just cracked me up laughing. You know, well, seeing you, know, you in Ultimo Dragon and Yuji Nagata in the, uh, in those days in Nitro, and you would do that before they uh, have cameras. their match. Yeah, interesting yeah. thing is that, is that when I started doing that, uh, well, for for a couple of reasons, you know, I mean, the stereotype of Japanese is you know it's always taking pictures, so, you know, and that kind of thing. And I said, you know, oh, yeah. that's great. So, you know, so we would get – we actually had a, a sponsorship deal that was in the works um, um, uh, with the Fuji, Fuji cameras because I would always come out with a little green Fuji camera and take selfies. So, I you love know, them. Uh, it, you know, and, and the truth is I am the innovator of selfies. You know, you, get, you know selfie got <laughs> real big in the last couple of years. But you have to understand, I'm the one who – I was doing it. Yeah, on the right. national yeah. television before anybody yeah. else was. I no, dare you did anybody to come up with and, and argue with me on that. <laughs> I, you with know, disposable uh, cameras. I will say this. I, I will yeah, I mean, we didn't we didn't have cell phone on. back then, you know. <laughs> Our cell phone looked yeah. like a little big, you know, World War II walkie-talkie back then. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I will, you know. I, I, will, I will say this, though, that uh, now on Twitter – and on Facebook, you are trending uh, hashtag Selfie King or King Selfie, Sonny Ono. 
Oh, great. I mean, and you know, you, like I said, I am the innovator, and you can you you can do this one, innovator of selfies, Sonny Ono. I mean, you can put all my picture of all those all those entrants we did. I was always stop and take a take take a selfie with my talent. You know, whether it was Ultimo Dragon, um, uh, or or you know, or, or Kanemoto, or uh, Liger, or um, you know, Ernest Miller, or every one of the person, even those luchadors that that uh, um, I manage, La Parca. Uh, psychosis, all those guys, Damien, you know, I would do selfies with all those guys. But the point is, though, and really is, and I want you to really get this out there, is that, you know, I, I, I was 15 years ahead of the time. You know what yeah. I mean? I was out there doing it on national television. So, you know, if, if, yeah, if you can, yeah, if you, if you, if you can introduce me from now on, as innovator of selfie, I would surely appreciate it. Well, well you know, uh, the next time you're on the show, we will start that over again and and, and put that up there. <laughs> and to tell you the truth, I would use that as an outro. <laughs> there you go. There you go. I'm, and uh, yeah, I think I think I'm I'm I might have to change my profile on <clears throat> Facebook and say you know innovator of selfies. Yeah. Real quick, I'm gonna bring in um a good old buddy, Tof Tofi there. Yeah, yeah, I'm here. Hey, buddy, you here live oh, with uh, Sonny Ono. How you doing? Bring you, you had a question for uh, Sonny? Oh, hey, Mr. Ono. It's a great honor talking to you. One of my um, childhood memories was, uh, you probably don't remember this, but it was a WCW Saturday night taping. I was in the front row with my dad. You walked right past me. <laughs> I touched your jacket, and you looked at me, and you just kept walking. <laughs> anyway, um, the question I want to ask for you is... Um, I- I'm sorry I didn't take a selfie with you. <laughs> uh, the question I wanted to ask you is um, Over the years a lot of people say that uh, You know the NWO was uh, The best thing to happen And the worst thing to happen Because it was great for WCW But like if you weren't part of the whole NWO thing You know you kind of got Or purposely held down And I remember the match The Ultimo Dragon had with D. Malenko At Starcade 96 And I remember the fans were really into that match And I remember your brief stint yeah. Where you were kind of partnered up with uh, Ernest the Cat Miller, and Ernest right. the Cat came out and cut promos, and I remember like there was a lot of heat on you and Ernest, and I felt like um, you could have gone a lot further than just like you know cruiserweight TV title stuff. Would you agree that there was a, a barrier like that the NWO thing kind of like held back some people that weren't involved in that? You know, I, I, this is how I saw and how I remember the whole thing. There was. There's obviously a main storyline in, in any production, you know, and that that was the um, NWO um, was so big. In, and like I told you earlier, you know, how big it was in Japan. Um, and And I think, you know, some of us wanted to be part of that. And I, I truly believe... It, when they started, when everybody became NWO, because you know everybody wanted to be part of that, you know NWO anti-establishment, you know the New World Order thing. I think they looted the they looted the product, the NWO. NWO was cool because Nash and you know Eric yes. and you know what I mean and Hall. That that's that's what made it cool. I think this is my. My opinion, but when when everybody became NWO, um, and I'm not talking about when they when they, when they did a spinoff of NWO Japan. You got to remember, I'm the one who, who who was managing Chono when Chono turned on me and became joined the NWO. But that made business sense. Like I told you, it's five million dollars worth a T-shirt that summer. So mm-hmm. you know, taking that NWO Japan and Chono being ahead of it. Taking it to Japan was the best thing that happened business-wise, uh, and and since they weren't here all the time, it didn't dilute dilute the product of NWO. Now, when everybody else became NWO, you know, I think that's when 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 it got kind of, you know, well, everybody's NWO. There was NWO, you know, I mean, you know, Conan, the and World was, Order, you know. Yeah, you know, Latino world order. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. 
I mean, I, I think you diluted the product. And, and, you know, and I understand. I mean, I, I, obviously I'm speaking retrospect, you know, being a backseat driver, uh, you know, looking back. Um, but, you know, was it cool when NWO happened in 98? Absolutely. It was in Cedar Rapid, Iowa, when, when, when you know, Eric gave that speech with NWO and, 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 and the things they did uh, uh, to bring NWO um, taking over WCW, I, I, I think that thing, the whole thing worked because of those guys. And I think when it got to be so many people, you know, everybody became NWO, I just think. And to answer your initial question about a, a barrier, you know, we knew what our part was. And, and it made no sense for me to be an NWO, or as much as, much as that might have been a cool, but it made no sense business-wise. Um, you know, and they have to have somebody to fight with. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. If everybody becomes, you know, everybody becomes a bad guy, then 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 who are you fighting? You know. So oh, so oh, yeah. um, now be, I, I will tell you this because of because of you know the, the the many hours of television opportunity we had, you know Saturday night TV taping was one of the funnest times that we used to have. Uh, uh, Jimmy Hart would a lot of time be be producing a lot of that show or, or booking that show, and and you know he would let us do a lot of things. You know that's where the three count came. Um, um, uh, Kaz Hayashi, you know, developed his character there, um, and we got to do a lot of things. I mean, you know, uh, like I said, uh, I, I mentioned this before in, in another show that that uh, um, they let us do what we wanted to do. We would, I, I don't know if you guys remember, but on a Saturday night TV taping, Ernest Miller had a match with Prince Ikea. And I would got on the stage. I said, Let, let's start introducing us as, you know, you know, A versus B. Why don't we do this? Why don't I get up on a ring and, and, and uh, 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 get the mic away from the announcer and say, guess what we got tonight, Cat? We have Prince. We have a prince on the show tonight, and and of course I was referring to the Purple Rain Prince, and mm-hmm. and and with my bad, really bad, of course you know it helps when you heal. That you know I would I was saying my Japanese karaoke version of P- Purple Rain, and you know mm. of course that's my you know goofy mistake of a, you know mistaking Prince I care for a uh, 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 you know Prince. The, the 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 singer, and we, you know he would come in and 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 would do the match. And next week, I don't know if you guys remember a guy named by Al Green. He was one of the wrestler, mm. kind of old timer, <laughs> but you know. Yeah. And I said, yeah. you know, next week, hey, I will come out and I said, hey, Cat, I'm sorry. Gee, you know, I thought we had Prince. I'm a real big music guy. You know, I, I go to karaoke every night, and you know, I know all their song, but I, for sure tonight, on the show tonight. We have Al Green, you know. Let's get together, you know Al Green. And I will start saying how, you know, my version of my rendition of Al Green. And let's get together. And of course, he would come in. So you know, we wanted to kind of continue to do that stuff, you know. So Saturday night TV taping was great because we got to do a lot of things, and and they would take some of the stuff that happened on Saturday night. Of course, take it to Nitro, you know. Um, like I said, the three counts and 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 um, um, you know. Kind of, kind of taking off on the young, uh, uh, you know, young uh, singing groups, uh, boy groups, and they, were, you know, and and they had a run with that. So, um, you know, you just have to know your position and you, you know, where you were on 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 the part of the show. But I have no, I have no really resentment or any kind of. Uh, you know, we we many many times we got to do what we wanted to do, you know. And wrestling, and 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 I'm speaking as a manager, not not as a worker, but um, 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 really doesn't matter whether whether you know you win a match or you don't. You know, there's a way that you can keep your heat and 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 you know, Ernest and I used to talk about it all the time. I think if you look at Ernest's match with me. You know, he probably lost more matches than, than than many of the guys that I have ever managed. Um, but yet, you know, Ernest was always over. You know, because he was entertaining. And and um, 
And the thing about yeah. you know, if, and and my my role as a manager for Ernest Miller was much different than my role as a manager for Yuji or or uh, uh, Bo Nakano or Akira Hokuto or, or Ultimo Dragon, because I wasn't their mouthpiece. I wasn't the guy who was you know speaking the English uh, uh, or, or translator. Um, my my role with Ernest was you know I was his you know his little sidekick. You know it was it was. Um, you know, it was our version of rush hour. You know, <laughs> I mean, you know, <laughs> uh, you know, you know, I, I, I would, I would do my little martial art thing, and, and you know, and Ernest would come and bail me out. You know, one of the funnest matches we had was with uh, when when uh, Kaz Hayashi tagged with uh, Perry Saturn, and we had a pay per view match with uh, uh, Kaz Hayashi, Perry Saturn versus uh, Ernest Miller and, and Sonny Ono, if you remember. And you remember who won that match? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I won that match. <laughs> yep. <laughs> you know, so we got to do a lot of things that 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 uh, and 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 you have to give it to a guy like Perry Saturn for allowing that story because he you know he put me over to allow the story to continue. You know. Well, and, well, and, and well, you know, actually, um, Sony, Sony, I did want to ask you a question about this. Um, I know you're talking about Saturday night. And you know, doing what you what you guys love to do, which I, I seen kind of downtrodden, just like well, it's the game we we're talking about with race. Now you were talking about NWO, and I agree with what you said about NWO. It was just too many guys in there, and a lot of those guys weren't effective. I mean, I used to watch Nitro, and uh, Virgil would get beat up like every week, and mm -hmm. and you know, it was just not it was not entertaining like that, but. Now, you want to talk about NWO. Now, let's go to present day. What do you think about uh, inspiration for NWO called the Bullet Club? Yeah, I mean, you know, they, they're doing that version in, in Japan as um, – um, um, uh, I'm trying to think who went over there. I mean, there's, there's a little invasion angle going on there. Um, there's like Luke you know, and AJ Styles and a whole bunch of them. Yeah, yeah. And I, I think I think they're trying to recreate some of that, you know. Um, um, look, you know, we all need, you know, and 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 I think formula is anti, you know, they're so bad that they're cool, right? They're 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 the, they're the guys that that uh, um, you know you don't want your daughter dating. You know what I mean? Those, those are the guys that, that you know the, the character they're trying to create, and and I think it goes over and resonates with some of the people, uh, some of the fans. Um, but you know, you, you just can't make it so obvious. I think you know that's that's the big thing. It's it's a fine line. I think you walk. You know, that's why you take some somebody like Kevin Nash, and 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 Scott Hall. You know, they they really made that thing work. You know, mm -hmm. and 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 they were, they were bigger than life, cool guys from WWE that came over. And so so well, to some of the fans were like, whoa, what they doing here? You know, yeah, yeah, and and that was the that was the basis when you saw Kevin Nash and uh, Scott Hall. They were like, "Wait a minute, Rick Ramon and Diesel are in WWF. Why are they here?" And then the fact is, they brought Hulk Hogan, who used to work for WWF, right. and then now uh, I think the Giant was a good addition. Also, uh, he was very effective. But now you have people like Big Bubba Rogers and Stevie Ray and uh, yeah, XQ, just, you know any guys that were. Product. Yeah, and, it you know, is. But look, you know, it's it, it's easy for us to sit back here, you know, 15 years down the line, and 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 say that it's it's easy. Um, you know, at the time, I I think I think that they had to produce so many television on on you know, I mean, what five, six, seven hours of television, and and that's not counting syndicated shows. I mean, that that's a lot of television, and and obviously. You know you can't you can't you know you can't spread those guys that you know because everybody wanted to, to see Scott Hall and and and, and Kevin Nash, I, you know so they needed to probably expand the expand the brand more by adding those other guys. You know I I mean I don't know what the business you know reason for that was, but but I'm sure that that mm -hmm. that played a part in it. Um, but you know. Uh, 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 you know, but get, get, changing subject a little bit, you know, I, I think one okay. of the things that is, I really miss that I, I think still missing 
and 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 hopefully uh, uh, Jeff Jarrett's Global Wrestling will add to that. It, you know, it, it is is uh, you mentioned you know Jim Ross who who did the uh, uh, announcing on that show. Um, uh, the, I think they did a pay per view a few months ago. Yeah. With a New Japan a, a, a dome show, and and oh uh, yeah. One other thing I wish they would do more um, is is amazing. You know, women wrestling from Japan. I'm talking about wrestling. I'm not talking about, you know, I'm, I'm not, 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 yeah, not to disrespect any of those. No, Only woman no. that really was amazing was the person who was trained over there was was Medusa, you know, who who, who could who could do, um, you know, twenty minute, thirty minute match with with um, Akila Hokuto and and Bona Kano and 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 uh, um, Chigusa Nagayo, but. Um, like I said, you know, I, I those women wrestlers were amazing, and they were just. I mean, I'm still to this day, I am amazed by how how good they were, how they made you. Oh, yeah. You know, you you talk about you talk about creating, you know, the the the, the you know Scott Hall and 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 Kevin coming over and creating this suspended reality like. They were really coming over, you know. Um, there was actually we're going to have this cross promotion thing, you know. They created that suspended reality, and 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 that's that's why I think that thing worked. And and having the the, the some of these women, if you watch those women wrestle, a majority of them, and, 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 and go go Google or go YouTube, you know. Uh, Akila Hokuto's matches, or Bo Nakano matches, or Chigusa Nagayo's match. You you look you look at those matches, and you can't believe how stiff they are. I mean, you you, you well, can't also, tell me. You know, I can't. I I, I, I couldn't take one of their kicks in my, and they kick you right in the face. Oh yeah. <laughs> now, well, hold on, now, Sonny. I just got a text from one of our fans who said, uh, "Wait one darn minute. The divas are off the hook. She she's defending the divas." And saying no, that I, she like I said, I'm, I'm, I'm not, I'm not discounting what they do, but I'm, I'm just saying what, I, it because it's a different product. I it think product is different. Mm-hmm. Um, um, yeah. I mean, you know, I, I, like I said, the product is different. Athleticism of those women wrestling in Japan, there's a lot of TNA going on over there, and I'll guarantee you. Um, and, mm. and 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 we all like eye candy, so. I'm not discounting anything that I mean. You know, you know. I, I love to see those women athletes, but what I'm saying is, what women wrestling in Japan is it's a whole different level, whole different, whole different art. You know, um, and like I said, well, those women you, will kick you right in the face. Well, yeah. tell you the truth, uh, there well, were well, uh, there was electrified well, cage yeah. matches in women's wrestling too. Yeah. yeah, you you well, take you take somebody like Bo Nakano who can take get on a turn, top turnbuckle, and and have her jump on you with both feet, double foot stump, and you know I don't know how many people who can even take that. I don't know how many, how many men who can take that. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, go watch some of those matches on the YouTube. Oh yeah. You gotta go. What the? You know. I mean, I, I have an amazing amount of respect for them. I believe we have a caller. Um, Brainer, are you cool? T four zero. Welcome to you under the mat radio with Sonny Ono. My question for Sonny is: Did Sonny ever hear any stories of Vince McMahon trying to sign the major stars of Japan that he was associated with, such as uh, Jushin Thunder Liger, Great Muda, Masahiro Chono, etc.? You know, uh, uh, obviously he 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 has he has obviously means to be able to sign those guys, but um, you know, whatever, you know, however their product is, I, I really haven't heard any. Um, I I think they would love to work in that company, but I I, I don't know the dynamic of uh, why it hasn't been done. But um, like like we were talking earlier, you know, I I I think what it needs to be done. Is to have somebody who can have right, you know, storylines for those guys to come over. I think I think when we did the initial World War Three pay per view was you know yeah. them versus us, 
um, Japan versus the United States. You don't need a lot of storyline for that. You know, it's a two great starting. company. Uh, yeah, yeah, two great company going no at starting. it. Yep, and yeah. and but I I think for for the individual talent now they have signed some of the New Japan uh, talent um, um, uh, recently, but you know. I, I don't know what they're doing with him. Uh, they changed his name. Um, you know, they, he's already have a great name established, but they changed his name um, um, since he been to de- he signed with WWE. And I know why. One of the reasons why they do is so they can own the rights to the the character name. Right. You know, and I understand that. But at the same time, you know, was anybody going to believe <clears throat> Jushin Thunder Liger coming over here and being called, uh, you know, Yoshimoto? You know, whatever. You know what I mean? I mean, I, I, you know, they're already a, they're already so, such established international stars. Um, I, I, I don't know if that can even make any sense. Right. Um, right. But I think the biggest biggest issue is that how can they, you know, how how are they going to promote that the international star? You know, I think right. I think that's the big thing. Thank, thanks, Chiki, for calling in, buddy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Real, real quick, Sonny, in, in closing, like I said, once again, we thank you for coming on to the show and all the time that you spent with yeah. us. Is oh, we know that. Thank you. Oh yeah. We know that uh, your your friends will be producer, and and recently she's uh, going to be inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame. So I wanted to give um, share your quick thoughts of her as being you know you being personal friends with her, with you working with in WCW and her being into the Hall of Fame. Well. I, I think it's a great honor, um, certainly, on, and, she, and, and she's, she certainly deserves that. Um, and and uh, I'm, I'm glad they, they kind of forgive her for throwing their belt in the garbage can. Um, you know. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I'm glad they gave, forgive her for that. But as far as, as, far as her contribution to, um, uh, you know, obviously she's very attractive. She's she, she done uh, greater things beyond wrestling with, with monster trucks. Um, and and uh, um, you know, and and she's a great friend and an amazing talent. And and what people don't realize with 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 uh, uh, Medusa is that you know she, she worked in in, in uh, all Japan uh, women pro wrestling. Um, she you, she endured the amazing amount of punishment to to and and, to, and training to to be able to wrestle some of those. Great women wrestler from Japan. Um, so you know, I have an amazing amount of respect for her. Um, uh, we worked together after she le- after WCW. We, we done some stuff together, uh, worked together in, in different shows and in, 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 in Bahamas and so on. Um, and and I have seen her um, and, and with her monster truck. And uh, mm-hmm. congratulations! I mean, I think she deserves it. Um, you know, she's she's um and, and, and one of the best part is they're they're uh, um I, I can call her. You know, they're she's one of the genuine person and I think she I think that's what makes her certainly different. Um and 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 um um I I am honored to know Medusa. Although they did try to kill me in, 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 in uh uh Sturgis when I try to hit her pink motorcycle with a sledgehammer. Oh, oh yeah. man! <laughs> I remember that. Yeah, you remember, remember my Japanese crotch rocket? Yeah. Yes, oh, yeah. I do. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, I'm telling you, man, that was one of the scariest time in professional wrestling because you got to remember, all those audience guys, audience members, were not necessarily wrestling fans. They were all sitting on their bikes. Oh yeah. Yeah. And, and if I'm just guessing, how many guns were in that audience? Oh. See, Sonny, you, Sonny, you were before your time too. Not only were you the innovator of selfies, also that was Sons of Anarchy way before it even came out. <laughs> yeah. Hog Wild was yeah. right. yeah. Sturgis, all of those bikes. There you go. And, I, and how brave was Sonny. I to ride a ride a World War Two helmet and and right. and ride the crotch rocket into that crowd? <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Right. Well, how you know, how brave people, was I? Or, yeah. or brave or stupid, I'm not sure, but it was it was a fun time. Mm-hmm. Yes, Miss Honey, right. we thank you much. 
anything you want to plug, you need to plug um, before we let you go. Well, you know what? The website. I, you know, and I didn't get to talk about it. We talk about wrestling all the time, but we don't talk about my, you know, my son Kaz, my youngest. Oh yeah, who has, uh, Oh, congratulations, uh, uh, man! He's been yeah, killing. He, he yeah. wrestled for Warburg <laughs> College. They're they're ranked. They were they were unranked this year. Nobody could, you know, they, they're five times. Uh, uh, in, they're actually four times wrong. I'm jumping myself. Four times. Last four years, they're NCAA uh, uh, national champion. Uh, Division Three, uh, Warburg College from Waverly, Iowa. They are uh, 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 this weekend. They'll be competing in, in uh, Hershey, Pennsylvania, um, a giant arena um, for uh, the fifth consecutive national championship. So uh, you know, shout out to those guys and, and good luck. Um, um, you know, uh, it, it's going to be it's going to be a battle, but I think they'll be successful. Um, so you know, uh, I am uh, I am big fan of uh, I am honored to have my son on that team, and and uh, uh, you know he, he's he's still a little freshman yet, but not too little. He's wrestling 141 pounds for Warburg. He's he's the only freshman on on, on the varsity team. But uh, so you know he's he's having a great time, getting a great education at the great institution, and uh, uh, but I tell you what. So people ask me, "What have you been doing these years?" And you know, since you left WCW, and I said, "Well, I've been doing. I've been taking selfies with my kid, um, um, <laughs> and, and uh, uh, it, it, it's been fun because I'm still managing wrestler, but it you know it's happened to be my own. His name is Kaz. Oh no, but not to not to be can, confused with Kaz Hayashi, and I didn't name him after oh, yeah. him either. But um, but uh, you know he's um, he's uh, um, you know, I think I think he'll he'll make some noise next next few years, and um, um, we'll keep you you know keep you guys informed through the Facebook and all that stuff. And um, oh, yeah. yeah, like I said, you know, just just uh, just let people know, you know, don't don't forget about me. I was the one who was doing selfies back and back you know, 17 years ago. Yeah, the king of selfies. Sunny Ono. Yeah, innovative selfies. selfies. So, right. hashtag on those dogs, too. You gotta give love to your dogs. <laughs> yeah. All right, well. <laughs> All right buddy. I, I appreciate you guys having me. It's fun. And and uh, looking forward to the next time. No problem, yeah, baby. Thank you. Thank you. Take care. Okay. Thank you much. Thanks for having me. All right. All right. Bye-bye. All right. Everybody, that was the man himself. Hashtag innovative selfies. Hashtag selfie king. Oh, yeah. He has it on his Twitter. He's been doing selfies since 1990. Six, you know he was in WCW before then. With the disposable cameras, not the digital cameras, the before cell phones and all of that stuff, and Twitter mm-hmm. and Facebook, he was doing the selfies. Fuji camera. So, yes, and the little Mickey Mouse cameras. Uh, you said you love them, Shin. Uh, what would he call the Fuji cameras? I like Fuji, Nikon, and Olympia cameras. They're, they're really good in photography. Yeah. So, definitely want to give a shout out to him. And all the other listeners that are under the mat radio that loves taking selfies, um, hopefully uh, all women, because if you're a dude and you take selfies duck all the faces. time, and you in duck faces and duck lips, and if you're in the bathroom <laughs> taking a selfie and you're a dude, it's man law violation. And if you game, what are your thoughts on that? Hold on, hold on. Hmm? Hold on what? What's, 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 what's wrong? Um, no, no, he was like taking selfies in, in the bathroom and saying that was a man law violation. What if you, what if you texting your girl like what you wearing and stuff like that? Um, that's different. But if you post it out on social media and you're in the bathroom and you're a dude and you're smiling and you put it up on Facebook or Twitter, it's man law violation. You shouldn't be doing well, that. This, do you do, do, you do well, that? Well, shit? Been, do you do, this, you yeah, do, you do that? Shit? No, no. I'm saying, yeah. I'm saying, huh? Vince McMahon is so. Stone Cold was promoting his shirt, and he did that. And Vince McMahon, he did that on his page. But you know, I was just saying, there that. gotta be some some guidelines. I did it with Raven's still man gear, law. So St- st- still man I, law. I did it with Raven's gear. I don't care. Uh, so, <laughs> so okay. brother, bring you on in. Um, you like the bird? What is so, up with the your, your thoughts of uh, selfies, uh, men and selfies. Uh, I'm not in tech. I'm not into technology at all, so I don't really care for it. Really? Hey. <laughs> All the video games? What's that? I said, All the video games you, you, uh, you know, you play and everything? 
Yeah, I play games, but I'm saying like oh. as far as like phones and pictures and stuff, like nah, I'm pretty old fashioned. I don't, I don't care about that. Like, um, what's that guy's name on NXT? I think his name is Tyler Breeze. Yeah, and, Tyler, uh, oh yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah uh, I checked out Tyler Breeze because a lot of my friends kept telling me, oh, you got to watch this dude named Tyler Breeze. He's the future. He's the future. I looked at his matches. He's good in the ring, but like the whole character where he just comes out and he just takes selfies and like I don't get it. And people were people like this one girl cool. gave me a lecture and she was explaining to me like Instagram and <laughs> Snapchat and like all this stuff. And I'm like, no. Nah. Uh, hey, when it girl. comes to cameras and stuff, I don't I don't care about any of that. So. Well, uh, to say the truth, Rook, in TNA they got Robbie E. Right, yeah. Robbie's a little different. Never did it in the bathroom, though, for all his pictures. Well, he's a cool dude. Yeah, okay. He is. Yeah, yeah, he's definitely cool with you, Shen. Moving on from that. Hey, <laughs> hey, hey, Game hey, Boy. hey, hey, hey. NFC Game Boy, your thoughts? Over the Sunday uh, uh, interview. Uh, the, the interview was great. Uh, are you asking about the interview or are you asking about the selfie thing? No, nah, Sunday on the interview, real quick. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, we got so a call. The, call the, the call interview was in. definitely great. Um, uh, we we got a chance to pick his brain about the some of the great minds of, of you know him and 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 Eric Bischoff of course working together. Um, I forgot about the whole uh, <laughs> uh, selfie creation thing that he said. I'm like, oh yeah, he was doing that like 16 years ago. So, <laughs> um, <clears throat> it, you know that that was that was also great to know, and, and it was also good to know about how the NWO influenced Japan. It's just to show you just how how big wrestling was at that time, you know, and the influence of the late 90s, you know, the Attitude Era, you know, WCW, the NWO, and, and, and expanding all, you know, uh, internationally. It just it goes to show you just, you know, how big <clears throat> it's really come and, and how much we're desperately uh, looking for that next uh, that next big thing to kind of pop off, you know, to take us to the, you know, that next level, the next plateau, so... It was definitely a great interview. You know, Sonny's always a, a character. He's a great guy. And um, hopefully we can get him and, and the cat on, you know. That would be great for yeah, the show. We, yeah, we're, we're currently in the works of that. Real quick, just to let everybody know that. Live, live, live. This Friday, ACW will be live. ACW. Yeah, great event called King of Maryland. Really, it's King of Maryland 3, but King of Maryland 2015. It will be in the OBI have? building. Veterans Tower with Millersville, Maryland. <laughs> if you have any questions uh, for the tickets, go to www.adrenalinewrestling.com. Of course, uh, some of the biggest stars that will be there, former ECW, WWE, and WCW star Raven will be there in attendance. Also, don't forget, it will be an eight-man tournament for the King of Maryland, featuring stars such as Kendrick Kamari, you know, the Vamp King, such as Steven Diaz, Louis G. Rich, and a bunch of other great wrestlers. Oh, can't forget Prodigy. Prodigy will be going against everybody Saul should give in a Prodigy. ladder match. And it's the Game Boy, so everybody who see Prodigy should just walk up and give him a hug. Yes, hashtag. You know what I mean? Hug yeah. Prodigy. Oh, man. I see the women. Just, just, just hug him. He's going to be mad and ferocious because he can't stand me. <clears throat> he, he can't stand the Game Boy. At the I want everybody to just give him hugs. And just yeah. say there, there. Uh, That's, when you give him a hug, say there, there. You got to say it. In, in, yeah, there, there. Like there, yeah, see? There, there. Yeah, got a hug, see? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 That's, a, that's, a slow, that's a slow uh, version of that. Give somebody, that's a special Olympics hug. Yeah. Hashtag. Woo, woo, woo. Hush, hush, hush. Yes, dude. Hush Hashtag Olympics bologna hug. sandwiches. ACW also <laughs> featuring on the night, Friday night, six-man tag match. We'll be featuring... As we said, Raven with Dual Day and Mad Dog, Buzz Striker versus the Not So So Secret Service and Desert Storm. Because Desert Storm was not able to join the show. He's in the mess training. And of course, one day he'll get his G.I. Joe action he figure. He just don't like her. He's working hard to get. And even this Kendrick Kamar, he doesn't yeah, like he... me at all. Please do not forget also our buddy Robbie Illuminati will also be, indu- will also be included into the King of Maryland tournament. Also, Louis G. Rich. Uh, ACW oh, I just got a World. text. Just got a text, Shin, Shin and, and Tech. Uh, I got just uh, one of the fans says, shout out to Desert Storm. Uh, his sister, there we go, his sister is is happy about Desert Storm being at ACW. She said shout mm-hmm. out to him. So, sorry. Yes. She'll wear the shirt. Yes, 
ACW uh, Women's Heavyweight Championship will be defended also, too. And, of course, you'll see Andy Weinberg of the winners will be there representing, too. Real quick, we're going to bring in a caller before we close it up. I believe you have a couple. Right there, we're going to bring in Area Code 410. This is Jimmy Dream. Welcome, brother. Hey, guys. Funny, I know finally shut up and got off. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Oh, What's going on, Jimmy? No, all the respect for Sonny Ono, but now. man, that man can talk, can he? <laughs> he, just, he wouldn't stop. I, I called three or four times. I was listening to him, but he was just telling the same stories, it sounded like, so I had to go. But, I mean, much respect for him. He's, uh, you know, he was always one of my favorites in WCW, but man, he can talk and talk and talk, can he? We got you now, Jimmy. You. On the line, got on through. Um, talk about ECW King of Maryland real quick. Well, King of Maryland, this Friday, it's our third annual, and I'm actually in the tournament myself this year. I haven't been yet. Uh, we've had two King of Maryland, but I haven't been a part of the tournament yet, so I'm excited about that. Taking on my tag team partner, Adam Ugly, and what we call the wild card round. Every year we put a tag team against each other in the first round of King of Maryland, and this year it just happens to be us, Adam and myself, so I'm excited about getting the ring with him. And then, you know, the first round's pretty pretty cool. We got Kindred against Louis G. Rich. We got Robbie Elnani versus Keikoa, which I know a lot of you guys probably aren't familiar with, but he's an awesome wrestler, amazing wrestler. Well, you guys, yeah, you've probably seen him down in Delaware. Yeah. amazing wrestler. I think Maryland wrestling fans are in for a treat with him. And um, we got Steve Diaz taking on TJ Sykes. So it's going to be a good first round. And um, I, I want to hear you guys' predictions. What are your predictions? Who do you think is going to win King of Maryland this year? Uh, my, uh, I hate to do this, Diaz. Uh, that, that's my buddy, but I got a feeling I think Louis G. Rich uh, is going to take the King of Maryland tournament this year. Right, anybody else there? Chen. Yes, Chen. Uh, me. Um, I, I'm going for Diaz. You know, I'm always I'm always that guy for underdogs. Okay. Well, Diaz has been the late heavyweight champion for a thousand, almost a thousand days. I don't know how much of an underdog he is. I guess in the King of Maryland he would be an underdog. He's the smallest guy. But, I mean, he's been the late heavyweight champion for almost a thousand days now. So, he's, I think he's pretty proven in ACW. And it, things are only going to get better for him. So, But, um, yeah, guys, I hope you're all excited for the show. Um, if you haven't visited the website, it's www.adrenalinewrestling.com. Is Sonny Ono still on the line? Because I don't want to you know, bury him. No, he's, he's on. He's off. Uh, no, you get it. Man. He's off. God, that guy can talk. <laughs> I mean, he, he. I was, I was liking some of his stories, but I mean, then he just kept on going back to the NWO, and there was twenty people, and <laughs> like, I just I had to go. But I mean, he, he seems like a real nice guy, though. He seemed pretty cool. I, I you know, I learned something today from him. I don't know if you guys learned anything oh, yeah. from him, but I did. I, he, he brought uh, Eric Bischoff into the business. He said, I, I had no clue about that. That was cool to learn because you know, I'm a wrestling historian, so I picked that up today. I'm excited about that. Anytime I learn something new about the business or the history of the business is a good day to me. So I did learn that listening to him. And, but, I mean, when you do these interviews, like I'll be off in the next two minutes. Man, he was on for an hour, which is cool for you guys that you got to interview him and he was with somebody. And, you know, he was in WCW for, I guess he was there for, what, eight or nine years? He was there for a while. He did. He did in the early 90s. Yeah, early 90s to... Yeah. Uh, well, up to, yeah, up to the early millennium. So, but Jimmy, real quick, well, thanks, trip, man. Jimmy, we're running, um, we, also, we running short on time. So, Jimmy, right, thanks, yeah, well, Jimmy, buddy. Yeah, we'll keep running short on time. Yeah, <laughs> thanks, buddy. You guys, uh, I'll see you guys uh, Friday. You guys take care. Yeah, thank, thank you, Jimmy. We'll see you then, baby. Thank you. And just to let everybody know, sorry about that, Shannon, but just let everybody know that Under the Mat Radio will be right. there. Live, live, live. King of Merlin. Under the Mat Radio. Security, we'll be doing security as usual there, probably with LSR. So please check us out Friday night. Next week we will have a huge guest for everybody. We will let you know on the Under the Mat Radio page, so please stay tuned. Thank you, Sonny Ono, for the great interview. Thank you, Prodigy. Hopefully you get a hug one day. Thank you, Diaz. Thank you, Skull, Jimmy Dream, uh, Cheeky, and everybody that called in. Yes. Big ups to Toast. Thanks, buddy, for calling in as well. And it's a game boy. Get a benediction. Oh, man, everybody loved the show. We got to give it an amen. Yes. Shank, can you say amen? Uh, amen. Um, I was going to to say with the the trends in there, 
I, you're going to get struck by lightning one day. I'm just saying with the trends, you know, you got uh, Ono Dogs, King Selfies, uh, Selfie King, Prodigy Hugs, and Prodigy Candies. Any, are there any more? Hmm. Oh, yeah, hashtag help Shane get a catchphrase. They can also do it. So, your last words, of course, as always. Yeah, I refuse uh, to Peace that. and condoms. Yes. Peace and condoms. And no with Khalifa. Yes. Yeah, please, no. Thank you very much. We will talk to you next week under the Matt Radio. Hashtags. Do Vince McMahon still like black people? Stay tuned. Hell no. Jim Ross said he did. Nah, not at all. James. He like cockroaches. (laughs) Okay. With Khalifa. He like Flo Rida. He always walk around with no shirt. He's not rapping. He's an entertainer. Oh, don't forget, NFC Game Boy, uh, Salty Eric Hughes gave you a shout-out. Like my chili? <laughs> <laughs>